Hi Kiwi, alright we are back at a new game and maybe you'll be able to guess what it is as soon as you see a little bit of the text. Well hello there, it's so very nice to meet you. Welcome to the world of Pokemon. <laughs> alright well that gives it away right away. My name is Rowan. However everyone just calls me the Pokemon Professor. This world is widely inhabited by creatures known as Pokemon. Oh that's some beautiful animation right there. Yeah, so I've been craving some Pokemon for a while, and here we are. Pokemon... I can do this. Shining Pearl. There we go. We humans live alongside Pokemon as friends. At times we play together, and at other times we work together. Some people use their Pokemon to battle and develop closer bonds with them. What do I do? I conduct research so that we may learn more about Pokemon. Now why don't you tell me a little about about... Blah, 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 blah. Well, I don't know where... Uh, uh, now, why don't you tell me a little bit about yourself? Choose your photo from the lineup. Alright. I mean... I think we're just gonna go with good old... I think his name is Brandon, or that might be Gen 3's protagonist. Uh... Yeah, we'll just go with standard, I think. We're vanilla. And my name is gonna be good old Jeff. And to keep the tradition we started with Undertale, let's go with three Fs. Your name is Jeff. Okay, so you're Jeff. A fine name, that is. Now this boy here, I believe he's your friend. What might his name be? None of these are correct. His name is Wally. It's definitely Wally, isn't it? Like, am I wrong? Isn't his name Wally? Well, I'll tell you what his name is. Uh, hmm. Could name him Disappointment, but that would be rude. Why don't we call him Betty? Alright, our rival's name is Betty. And one day, ba Betty will be a Pokemon Master. Pokemon Master Betty. Nyehe! <laughs> Be Betty, is it? Is that your friend's name? Yes. Alright, Jeff, the time has come. Your very own tale of grand adventure is about to unfold. On your journey, you will meet countless Pokemon and people. I'm sure that along the way, you will discover many things, perhaps even something about yourself. Now go on and leap into the world of Pokemon. Alright, Rowan. That's our intro. So, full disclosure, Gen 4 is probably one of the generations I hold closest to my heart because it's where I learned to start playing competitive Pokemon. I wish it got a better remake. I have only, oh, ex despite the exploration, wait, wait, what's this? Despite the exploration team's best efforts, the rare oddly colored Pokemon eluded detection. The rumored red Gyarados failed to appear even fleetingly to the crestfallen team. Is that all we get for the news today? Oh. That concludes our special report. Search for the red Gyarados. Brought to you by Jubilife TV on Nationwide Net. See you next week, same time, same channel. Well, I figure I'll bring some casual voice acting into it, but anyway, so I have heard concerning tales about this... Are we just going to bed already? Oh, okay. I've heard some concerning tales about this game, but I figure, you know, Gen 4 is super nostalgic for me, even if it's not a perfect game. I can at least play it a little bit. Uh, and... and We'll see where it takes us. I did have to go through a 15 minute patch and then when I booted up the game, it took two minutes to load in, which is not reassuring. I might just have to edit out some of the load times in this game if it's that bad, uh, but we'll see. Jeff, <clears throat> Jeff, Betty came calling for you a little, uh, Betty came calling for you a little while ago. I don't know what it was about. I, I don't know what it was about. But he said it was an emergency. Alright, well, let's go find Betty. I guess. That's a nice still image TV. Here we are. It's the Contest Digest. The star of the show in today's Normal Rank Cleverness Contest is... Wesley, who won with his particularly well-groomed Pokemon. That's all the time we have today. Let's meet again. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know what I'm doing with the voices necessarily. And it's going to be super casual. That's my intent. But I'll, I'll bring some voice acting in here or there. Oh yes, Jeff, don't go into the tall grass. Wild Pokemon might attack you. It would be okay if you had your own Pokemon, but you don't, so get one, scrub. All right. Well, just for full clarity, this will intend I will intend this to be a Nuzlocke, but my Nuzlocks are a little special. I call them Jeff Locks because of course I have my own vanity and put my name on it. Uh 
but I, rather than go into all the rule sets for that, I'll kind of discuss them as they become relevant, and I'll make a little comment or a like note in the description if you really want to know all of them going into this, but it will be slightly different from the traditional Nuzlocke, in a fun way, I hope. Technology just blows me away. I mean, now you can play with people around the world wirelessly. All right, why don't we progress with the, sto with the story a little bit? I think Wally probably lives over here because it's the only other house in town that has a mailbox. Thud. What was that about? Oh, hey, Jeff. I'm going to the lake. You should come, too, and be quick about it. Okay, Jeff, I'm finding you $1 million if you're late. Oh, jeez, forgot something. You know, I'm having a realization that maybe Wally was the Gen 3 friend. So I could be completely wrong. I'll just have to look up this guy's name and confirm it after the next episode. Forgive me if I was mistaken. All right, let's go see what uh, not Wally forgot. Maybe I should just call him Wally regardless, even though he's Betty. I better take my bag and guidebook too. Oh, hey, Jeff. We're going to the lake. I'll be waiting on the road. It's a $10 million fine if you're late. That's 10 times more than what it was before. Dude, slow your roll. All right. Do we get anything for looking at his PC? I will check briefly and then we will go follow after him. You check the PC screen. Adventure rule number one, the expo button opens the menu. Adventure rule number two, you can record your progress with save. There is nothing else on here. Man, Wally, does, uh, not Wally keeps some very, not very distinct, oh gosh, not very distinct notes. Anyway, let's go ahead and progress with our little boring story before we get into the meat and potatoes of this run where we get to actually play Pokemon instead of we get to play the slow loading narrative. Okay, the loading screen there wasn't too bad at least. It is, I am going to have some very strong nostalgia through this playthrough, I have to say though. The music, the Pokemon, it's, it's gonna bring back some strong memories of my childhood. Hey, you saw that news report that was on TV, right? You know, search for the Red Gyarados, the mysterious appearance of the furious Pokemon in the lake. That show got me thinking. I bet our local lake has a Pokemon like that in it too. So that's why we're gonna, that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna go find a Pokemon like that. All right. I've seen enough speedruns to know this is the part of the game where things start to really break, potentially. Unfortunately, I did patch the game. As I mentioned, it was a 15 minute patch because this game was freaking broken on release. Unfortunately, I only have the 1.00 patch as the base model, so I couldn't like do all the fun glitches that are used for the speedrun in the 1.1 and 1.2 patches. All right, to the lake, let us find a red Gyarados. But it is what it is. What's going on? Professor, there isn't anything out of the ordinary on the other side either. Hmm, I may have been mistaken. Something appears to be different than it was before, but fine, it's enough. We've seen enough of this lake. Don, we're leaving. P Professor, how are you enjoying being back in Sinnoh after being away for four years? It must be exciting again. Hmm. There is one thing I can say. There are many rare kinds. There are many rare kinds of Pokémon in Sinnoh. The region should serve us very well in regard to our studies. Excuse me. Let us pass. <laughs> Excuse me. Let us pass, please. I beg your pardon, we'll be on our way. See you guys. What was... What was that about, those two? Huh? Jeff, let's go check this out. What's that? Don't go... Don't go into the tall grass. No problem, no problem. We won't be in there long enough for a while Pokemon to come out. This dude definitely has a sense of poor self-preservation and... Gotta go fast. Maybe I should have named him Sonic. It's a briefcase? Those people forgot it here. What are we supposed to do with it? We can try to return it, but who were they? I heard them say Professor. Oh no, wild Pokemon in the tall grass we weren't supposed to step into. Wah, Pokemon! What's going on? Alrighty. Look, these are Pokeballs. Let's battle using the Pokemon in them. Which one do you want, then? Uh... That one. Will you choose the Tiny Leaf Pokemon Turtwig? Heck yeah. Don't mess around with a man and his turtle. Oh, I don't get to, nick I don't get to nickname him yet? I guess maybe we get offered later. 
All right, I know choosing a grass type into a flying type is probably not the smartest decision, but this is the first fight. And look at his precious little smile. I love Turtwig. He was... I think I used Piplup for one... I had both uh, Diamond and Pearl back in the day. Pearl was my original uh, game, though. Uh, I did not really like the design of Dialga for some reason. Oh, starting off with a crit. That's cool. So I ended up um, going with Pearl. And honestly, Palkia was more interesting to me competitively anyway because I mean they both have really good type matchups they're they're dragon steel and dragon water are both ridiculously good defensive typing but I don't know Palkia appealed to me way more your Pokemon gain experience woohoo all right so we're gonna nickname our Turtwig as, as soon as possible and like I said we are following Nuzlocke rules and at the base so we will be trying to name everyone we catch wow you're <laughs> wow your Turtwig totally rocked but my Chimchar was way tougher than yours they were other people's Pokemon, though. We have to use them. Those people won't mind, will they? I think they're gonna mind a little bit. Oh, there's the briefcase. The professor would have been furious if I'd lost it. Huh? Oh no! Did, did you use the Pokemon that were in here? You did? Oh my gosh, what's the professor going to say? This is so not good. I'll take this briefcase for now. And again, this is going to be super casual voice acting. There's going to be a lot of blind reads and a lot of flub lines. I'm, I'm not trained in voice acting or acting at all, so I'm just doing it for fun. What was that about? I don't know what's going on, Jeff. Let's get out of here. My Pokemon got hurt from that battle. If we get attacked by another Pokemon, we might be in trouble. I didn't even take damage. Betty, get on my level. You're bragging about doing the battle faster, but you took damage. Y you go on ahead. I know we have to go return these Pokemon. They're not ours. But I want to spend just a little more time with this little guy. You go on ahead, but he follows me. Okay. I can't wait until we unlock the running shoes or the bike, because, wow, this is slow. Hey, it's those people! Is that the old guy staring at us? Is that old guy staring at us? Hmm. I heard from Dawn that you use our Pokemon. Let me see them, please. Hmm. Hurtwig and Chimjaw. Hmm, I see. So that's how it is. Dawn, I'm going back to my lab. Okay. Um, uh, uh, okay, Professor, please wait for me. I think you should visit our lab later. Okay, see you. What was that all about? What was all that craziness about? I mean, if he was angry, he could have just yelled at us or whatever. And didn't he want his Pokemon back? Jeff, we should go home, too. Oh, so we can fast travel for this part, I guess. Oh, look, it's Dawn's mom. I don't remember what the mom names are in Pokemon, because I never really cared that much. But I know there's a certain part of the internet that very, very, very much does. We're not going to talk about that part of the internet. This is a nice, chill, casual Pokemon playthrough. What's up, dear? Wow, I can't believe that happened to you. Am I ever glad that both you and Betty are unharmed? The professor you mentioned is most likely Professor Rowan of Sandgem Town. I've heard that he's well known for his studies on Pokemon. I hear he's also quite intimidating. Jeff, I think you need to visit him in Sandgem Town. You need to properly explain why you had no choice but to use his Pokemon. Don't worry, I'm sure he'll understand. Oh, I know. Jeff, put these on. Running shoes, running shoes. Yes, we received a pair of running shoes. Going to Sandgem Town is like an adventure in itself, right? With those running shoes, you can get to a faraway place is much faster. Okay, let me read the instructions. Note the left stick firmly and dash about faster than ever before. And the running shoes and blaze new trails on of and blaze new trails of adventure. Well, isn't that just nifty? Alright, thanks, Mom. See you later. Alright. Okay, so I don't even have to hold the B button like we did back in the day. Back in my day, if we wanted to run fast, we had to we had to commit to it. <laughs> I don't know. Is Wally just going to be waiting for us over here? Maybe not. Maybe he's in his house. Okay, I guess I know we named him Betty. And I'm progressively becoming more confident that his name, in fact, is not Wally. But forgive me if I just continue to not call him by the name I gave him or his correct name for the remainder of the playthrough. And we'll just make that the running joke for this series, uh, along with just my... my life. That's definitely a joke, right? Nah. Anyway, how are you doing today, Kiwi? I'm doing pretty well. I'm on coffee, if you couldn't tell. 
talking about coffee like it's a drug and whatnot. Wild Pokemon, lur wild Pokemon lurk in the tall grass. They can come bursting out at any time. So if you're wanting to battle wild Pokemon, just walk in tall grass. If you don't, if you want to avoid wild Pokemon, then stay out of the tall grass. Oh, well, we found something. All right, so I don't think I have Pokeballs, so I'm not gonna count the you can't catch Pokemon, or you can only catch the first Pokemon you encounter in, in each region. I'm not going to count that rule until I have Pokeballs to use. But one of the other rules of the Jeff Lock that I have is I cannot run from any battle. If they're trash mob battles or like land not interesting Pokemon, I'll probably skip through the fight so that we don't have the episodes getting super padded with just wild battles. But we'll, we'll see. This one I'm gonna leave in the recording just because it's our it's our first. What we're 15 minutes in and we've had two battles so far. But I'd like to have at least something happen in this episode. <laughs> I mean, this is riveting gameplay, isn't it? Your Pokemon gain experience. Woohoo! Yeah, that, that's that's gonna be one of the core rules of Jeff Lock is any trainer you see in on screen you have to battle, and any encounter you have, you have to fight it out. Potion? Hi, I work at a Pokemon. Did you know that a Pokemon's health is measured by hit points or HP for short? If a Pokemon runs out of HP, it faints and can't battle anymore. If a Pokemon's HP gets low, you should heal it with a potion. Here, let me give you some potions as a sample. These ones are free. They will automatically go in your bag's medicine pocket. Alright, so another Jeff Lock rule that will be relevant here is I can use any items that I encounter in the overworld through my gameplay. Uh, I cannot sell items, and I can purchase certain items from the Pokemarts. But we'll go into more uh, detail about what those are in a little bit. The biggest, probably most important things are going to be burn heals and poison heals, because those are going to be the mechanics that can throw a run. Basically what I'm getting at is, I have a, in the Jeff Lock, one of the rules is, any Pokemon that is hit by poison, burn, or freeze, and stays in that status for three turns or more, is considered dead. If you finish the battle and get to the overworld, uh, if that Pokemon is not cured of its status ailment within three, uh, within six steps of the overworld, again, that Pokemon is considered dead. And of course, classic Nuzlocke, if a Pokemon faints, it is also considered dead and not usable. But one of the fun rules that I'll have for this playthrough is Max Revives. As you find them in the overworld, they are usable up to three, and they can be used on the same Pokemon multiple times. I get the feeling Starly only knows Growl here, which is kind of lame, because it just means this battle is going to take forever with my Turtwig. Uh, but at least I don't have to worry about taking too much damage. Anyway, um... So the thing about the Max Revives, though, is they're not immediately use, uh, usable, because here's going to be one of the other big changes to the Nuzlocke. I love catching Pokemon. There's something very satisfying about the whole collectathon aspect of Pokemon. So, oh, it does have an offensive move. Look at that. Anyway, um, I, I have a rule that allows me to catch any Pokemon. I just can only use the first Pokemon encountered in each region, typical of most standard Nuzlocke's. And, and so... What that means for us, Leafage, I don't remember that move. I guess that's something to replace, uh, like a, maybe a weaker version of Razor Leaf. Okay. I'll have to take a look at that later. Anyway, so so basically, I can catch as many Pokemon as I want, I just cannot uh, use any of them other than the first one I encounter. Oh, there you are. Please come with me. The professor is waiting. But I always have NPs here to hold my hand to the destination. This is it, our Pokemon Research Lab. Let's go. Thud. Look who it is. What? What the? Oh, it's you, Jeff. That old guy, he's not scary so much as he's totally out there. Oh, it doesn't matter, Jeff. I'm out of here. See you later. Smell you later, buddy. Well, was, what was that? Your friend sure seems to be really impatient. Well, anyway, let's go inside. Also, I know I've done it a couple times, but there are going to be instances where I kind of misread the line but try and roll with it, so I might just change it to be structurally correct sentence, but not quite the same lines as what is on the screen. Finally, you finally you've come, Jeff, was it again? Uh, finally, you've come. Jeff, was it again? Er, Jeff, was it? I, I, oh my goodness, the cadence on this is awful. Finally, you've come. Jeff, was it? Let me see that Pokemon again. Hmm, I see. This Pokemon seems to be rather happy. Alrighty then, I'll give you that Turtwig as a gift. Now that it's yours, would you like to give it a nickname? Heck yeah. Don't mess around with a man and his turters. I don't know if it's spelled T-E-R-T-E-R -E -E or 
you are, but I'm going to go because it's, of how they spell Turtwig, I'm going to go with that. This is indeed a reference to Xenoblade 2. Don't mess around with a man and his turtle. Hmm, I see. Hmm, okay, I see. And you're happy with that nickname. Yes. Your friend Betty told me what happened at the lake. I bet you battled very well, despite it being your first time. And from what I can see, there is a growing bond between you and that Pokemon, though it is still young. That's why I would like to entrust you with this Turtwig. Uh, tur -twig. I'm so glad that you are kind to our Pokemon. If you weren't, I'd have to. Oh, I just can't say it. Kill me? <clears throat> Let's move on to the main topic. There's something I want you to do for me. My name is Rowan, and I study Pokemon. First of all, I want to know exactly what kinds of Pokemon live in the Sinnoh region. To do so, it is necessary to collect data using the Pokedex. This is what I wish to ask of you. I want to entrust you with this Pokedex. Will you use it to record data on all the Pokemon in Sinnoh for me? Sure. Hmm, good answer. You obtain the Pokedex. I'm going to lose my voice from doing Rowan for too long, but I don't think we'll have much to do with him for too long. That Pokedex is a very high-tech device. It will automatically record data on every kind of Pokemon you encounter. Jeff, I ask that you go everywhere and meet every kind of Pokemon in this region. I've got one. I've got one, too. When you walk... Thanks, Don. Thanks for chiming in there. You're definitely relevant to this conversation. I like your bag. It looks like a yellow cake with a line of chocolate inside. When you walked up Route 201 with your Pokemon, what did you feel? I've, I've lived for 60 long years. Even now, I get a thrill when I'm with a Pokemon. Now, you should note that there are countless Pokemon out in this world. That means there are just as many thrills waiting out there for you. Now go! Jeff, your grand adventure begins right now! The Pokemon that I used for the first time was Piplup. If you want to have a ch if you would have chosen Piplup at the lake, we'd have the same Pokemon now. Somehow I know that's not the case. Not that it matters, but... Although, unless they're going by the anime logic, in which case, yeah, Piplup was her first. Anyways, I'm Don. I also help the professor add pages to the Pokedex. So in a sense, I'm just like you. I just got a little head start on you, that's all. I'll be happy to teach you things. Glad to meet you, Jeff. Bye, Don. Okay, is that it? Anything else, Rowan? Go on. Jeff, your grand adventure awaits you. Okay, cool. Glad we're repeating ourselves. Do your friends give us any free Pokeballs? Professor Ro Rowan invented a new Pokedex while working alongside Professor from the Kanto region. I'm Don's father. I'd, I'll be happy to assist you on your quest for the Professor. Ha ha ha. Except I'm not... I, I, I'm sure we can count on you. All right, no free Pokeballs for Jeff. Fair enough. Someone's going to have to show us how to catch Pokemon, because I don't think I know how to catch Pokemon without being explicitly told after playing Pokemon for almost two decades. Okay, Jeff, I'll act as your mentor. Oh, perfect. Thank you, Don. I don't know where I'd be without you. I've got a bit more experience than you as a trainer and as a professor's assistant. Trust me, Don, you do not, actually. Okay, follow me. This is a Poke Center. Oh, darn it. He has more words. Cool. This building with the red roof is a Pokemon Center. It's the place that heals Pokemon that have been hurt in battle. You can find a Pokemon Center in most towns. The building with the blue roof over here is the Pokemart. It's a shop where you can buy and sell items and medicine. Jeff, since you're a novice trainer, you won't be able to buy many kinds of merchandise. Don't let it bother you. Oh, that's right, Jeff! Don't you need to let your family know that you're going to be helping the Professor Rowan- uh, Going to be helping Professor Rowan with the Pokedex? You may need to travel pretty far, so I think you should let them know. Oh, but before you go, heal up your Pokemon at the Poco Center. It'll be a lot less scary that way. Okay, bye now. I also need to, like, I read too fast, and I recognize that, like, I, I am speaking at the speed that I am reading, which is not necessarily great for the, like, um, uh, for delivery. Oh, wow, Pokemon are so cool. I wish I had one. You can help yours get stronger by having them battle. Like, and I'm gonna try and not talk to everyone in town unless there's something interesting for them to say. Like, I'll, maybe I'll, like, at the end of an episode, go through the town, talk to everyone, and then play the record- uh, like, add it to the recording at the end if there's anything relevant. So I'll do that for these two towns. Also, we're not going to use the Poke Center because that's one of the other big Jeff- uh, Jeff Lock rules, is Pokemon Center uses are limited. You get three at the start, and you gain one more for every time you beat a rival? Or a major story event, like a, a gym leader, an Elite Four member, a, well, I mean, I guess not an Elite Four member because of reasons, but a gym leader, a, a rival, a enemy team boss, any, like, major event is going to give you one extra charge of use of the Poké Center, and that includes using the PC, so keep that in mind. Um, 
And then I was mentioning Max Revives. So Max Revives, you can't, even if you find them, you can't use them immediately. You need to catch Pokemon. Uh, and even though you can't use them, the more Pokemon in your Pokedex that you have caught, the more Max Revives you can use. And I'm going to make it so every 30 Pokemon that is in the uh, caught part of the, uh, the caught section, so the left section up top, which currently only has one, um, for every 30, you can use one Max Revive. And that's how we're going to play it. Anyway, Mom. Welcome home, Jeff. Are you and your Pokemon healthy? Take a quick rest, dear. Um, as far as forced heals are go, like the heals that are required for progressing the narrative, I am not going to count not going to count them in consuming a charge of the Poke Center, because this again is specific to the Poke Center. I'm still allowed to enter the Poke Center and talk to NPCs, I just cannot use the PC or heal. What's up, Jeff? Wow, Professor Rowan asked you to do something that big? Okay, dear, go for it. Your mom's got your back. Oh, I know, Jeff. I've got something you'll find useful. Obtain, obtain the guidebook. Probably never going to use that. Let's let's be honest. That's a guide. That's a guidebook. Take a look at it when you are curious about something or have questions during your adventure. You may find an answer. Gee, a journey full of adventure. I envy you, kiddo. Plus, you're not alone. You have your Pokemon with you. I wish I could go instead. I'm just joking, Jeff. I'll be right by myself. I'll be all right by myself, dear. So you go and enjoy your adventure. When you're exposed to new things and experience new sensations, it makes your mother happy too. But please come back sometimes. I would like to see the kinds of Pokemon you've caught, dear. The guidebook. Useful information for your adventure will be added to this guidebook. You can check it in your bag's key items pocket. <laughs> uh, uh, oh gosh, another mom. We're just gonna stick with the mom voice. Excuse me, is my little Betty here? Oh no, he's not. Oh, then he must have left already. What to do? That boy shouted about going on an adventure, and then he bolted. He's so headstrong and reckless. I at least wanted to give him- I at least wanted him to take this. Not to worry, Jeff will deliver it to him, won't you, Jeff? Oh, really? You do that for me? Jeff, please take this to Betty for me. You obtain the parcel. Woo, it's a nondescript package. Sure, why not? Bye-bye, Jeff. Enjoy your adventure. Let me think, knowing my boy, he probably would have headed straight to Jubilife City. Okay, please take that to my Betty. All right, let's go visit the future master Betty. Your clothes are red. Okay, actually, I'm not even close to doing that impression right. <laughs> Your clothes are... No, still not doing it. I guess I can't do it today. Oh, well. Oh, Jeff, you're forgetting something important. Oh, yes, of course. Clothing? Did I put on, I put on clothing, right? I didn't actually mentally register what we looked like before this scene. Yes, that hat. Oh, oh, it was. We are, right. We were missing the hat. I'm like, we're wearing the same clothes, right, Kiwi? I didn't. This is definitely a mark against my my long term memory, or even my short term memory. Never mind. Yes, that how that hat always did suit you well, Jeff. Personally, I would take it off. Honestly, I'm not a big fan of wearing hats. Now off you go. All right, on to our great Pokemon adventure. But all right. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to tack on any extra dialogue from the bosses that we haven't talked to and see if there's anything worth including here. Alright, so as it turns out, there's like nothing to do in either town that we've been to so far that has anything more than a little bit of flavor text that was particularly uninteresting. Although we did get to meet Dawn's grandfather and sister, apparently. Anyway, we're going to go ahead and buy some Pokeballs because we haven't been given anything free yet. We'll go buy. We'll go ahead and buy a nice solid 15 of these because we'll be using them often enough. And as I mentioned before, I am allowed to buy items in the Pokemart. Most importantly is going to be the antidotes because again, uh, poison is lethal in this playthrough. So we'll buy five of those. We'll buy a couple paralyzed heals as well because uh, the way this works is I've banned full heals. I cannot buy full heals. I cannot use full heals. But I can use any items that don't fall into, like, the fully healing effects, so like max potions, full restores, or cure-alls that remove all status ailments. I can only use items that cure specific status ailments. I can use potions, I can use hyper po up to hyper potions, and anything that doesn't do a full heal, like a soda pop, a lemonade, that sort of thing. But I think in the next episode we'll be on to Jubilife City and most likely our first gym battle, but before we call it a day, I have Pokeballs now. Why don't we see who's going to be our first Pokemon that joins the team? Is it going to be Starly or is it going to be Bidoof? Let's find out. It is... 
a doof. Here comes the boy. So I know that Bidoof has progressively over time become a meme, but I was always on the Bidoof bandwagon. When I used to do competitive, I would train I would train Pokemon for EVs on one of my save files, on like I think it was my my copy of Diamond, and then I'd trade them over to my Pearl version. And I traded them with just Bidoofs I caught in this early route, which is just kind of funny. And I ended up, uh, I, I don't know if you were ever aware of it, but there was a game called Pokemon Ranch. And I had, I think by the end of my competitive experience, about, it, it went from just trading for the competitive scene to um, a, a joke of my own. I had, I think, 636 Bidoof on, on the ranch, plus one Rayquaza. Rayquaza, Rayquaza, whatever, however you pronounce it. So, uh, yeah, if I can find a photo of that, I will do my best. It'll probably have to be a really gross screen, like, photo with my phone, because I don't think I have any realistic way of taking a photo of my Wii, uh, of my Wii foot, uh, like, anything off of my Wii. But, yeah, if I can include that photo, I'll include it here. All right, but we've got our first addition to the team, and that is Bidoof. Now, what are we gonna name you? Hmm... It constantly gnaws on logs and rocks to whittle down its front teeth. It nests along water. Would you like to give Bidoof a name? Yes, I would. I think there's only one name that I want for my Bidoof. The Doof is online. Welcome to the team, the Doof. But with all that said, Kiwi, I hope you've enjoyed watching. This journey is only starting. I know there hasn't been too much progress, but that's the nature of these games. The first episode's always a lot of dialogue. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed what I'm doing with the voices again. I am super no novice at all this, and I'm just trying to practice and get better at it. Uh, with all that said, any input, any advice, any recommendations on how to do things better, I'd love to know. This is my first time ever recording a Switch game, so uh, lots to learn. With all that said, Kiwi, I hope you've enjoyed watching, and if you're awake, I hope this is helping you fall asleep. If you're asleep, I hope you're sleeping well. Next episode, Jubilife City, our first gym battle, probably our first rival battle. A lot of things to look forward to. But until then, I hope you're sleeping well. I love you, and I'll see you in the next one. Kiwi, I forgot. There is a parade function. Also, I now confirmed it is... I brought 668 Bidoof. And one Rayquaza. The rest were from the other trainers that ha happened on the ranch, I guess. But let's go on a parade and appreciate what happens. Because apparently that's a function here. If I can get the Wiimote to function. Yeah. There it is. A beautiful mass of Bidoof. And probably a Rayquaza somewhere in there. Unless I removed it. Who in their right mind needed this many Bidoof? Just absolutely beautiful. Just absolutely beautiful. Enjoy, Kiwi. Thanks for watching.